。各位专家学者，大家上午好，欢迎各位 speakers。Good morning, welcome to this session. The theme of this session is replacing plastic with bamboo, innovation in science and technology of engineering bamboo, and we will clarify the major problems in our industry to promote the construction of the engineering system of bamboo. Today we have the honor to invite six speakers. They are. Professor Yu Yangwen, Research Institute of Wood Industry from Chinese Academy of Forestry. Professor Li Haitang from Nanjing Forestry University, and、uh, Professor Shao from Chinese University of Hong Kong. Riley Baker from、uh, Alcabo Transiro Tech, and、uh, last but not least. Mr. Yu Lun from ICBR, and the first speaker is Mr. Professor Yu. He will talk about fabrication and application of structural bamboo screamer. Welcome. The floor is yours. Yu 老师，请解除静音。好嘞，能听得见了吗？ Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Now I'll start my presentation. Can you hear me? Yes, everything is good. Please start. Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Professor Zhu, we can't hear you. Are you talking? Yes, I'm talking, but we cannot hear you.、Uh, let me share my screen once again. Is it a video? So let me try again. Sorry for this technical issue. I'm sharing my screen now. Bamboo scrimber is a new type of bamboo-based composite material, which is made by fluffed bamboo bundles and glued with a resin based on not disturbing the fiber arrangement direction and retaining the basic characteristic of bamboo. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, we can. Please continue. After. The bamboo screamer made by the directional recombination technology has not only improved the physical and chemical properties of bamboo, but also with new functions such as flame resistance, anti corrosion, and、uh, etc. It is widely used in a wide range of products like furniture. This is a manufacturing process of structural bamboo screamer, which includes the raw.、Uh, Radio splitting, bamboo strip splitting, and、uh, also sometimes we need thermal treatment. After 
that we have a fluffing process in pre ignition of PF resin. The evening, evening, very even, and then we have a forming process and the pressure. The bamboo screamer is compressed, and then in this process, we can see that the fibers and the cells are compressed and are becoming more strengthened. The chemical mechanical properties are changed. Then it is processed into different products. It is uh, different from the traditional way of uh, treatment and we need to apply some special technologies. I uh, will not talk about the detailed technologies in, de in details. And if you're interested, we can talk after the meeting. The structural bamboo screamer usually refers to bamboo screamer suitable for engineering materials. It has certain specification with density of lower than 1.1 and characteristic of uh, environmental friendly, not easy to split, and it can resist the flames and it can is anti corrosion. And uh, the mechanical properties are as follows. It is uh, in terms of size, it is uh, 15 meters long. When the density is 1.1, we can see the performance compared with original bamboo, all the parameters increased by one fold. It is very suitable for making uh, products and it is also resist to it is not easy to crack and to split that is a fundamental or great improvement compared with the original bamboo so it is can be used to make uh, furniture the fatigue strength of uh, the reconstructed bamboo reached 13 We have established a lab since 2019. We have done the test in the chemical mechanical properties of the bamboo screamer. Now we have the duration of low defect and the creep effect. We can see that the DOL effect or BS was about 0 0.5, while the other performance are better. These are the experimental structure. Based on the data, we have uh, relative design value of strength of bamboo screamer with a density of 1.15, which is higher than those of other materials such as the large products and the steel products. We also develop some uh, properties of a structural bamboo screen per flame retardant properties. The ignition time of RMB increased from 11 seconds to 39 seconds. As for the anti-module efficiency, it reaches one grade. The original bamboo is very easy to get module. So after eight years of efforts, we have uh, developed the anti-mood and uh, it is uh, very effective. These are the uh, field experiment. After two years of time, you can see the surface does not change much. 
while the original bamboo, after one month, the surface will change. Through our lab experiments, we can find that the anti corrosion efficiency of bamboo screener is very strong and uh, it can reach grade one. Bamboo cricket also can resist the insects. insects. If you want to have a better performance, you need to have the termite erosion uh, treatment. And uh, after the treatment, it is uh, very good. A negative carbon product amount of carbon footprint is about uh, 14, 3.69 kg per ton. It is uh, a, a negative carbon product in every sense. Compared with other material, this is energy consumption of a bamboo scrimper. It is uh, lower, energy consumption is lower than the wooded products and apply wood. It is also a clean material. Comparison of a greenhouse emission between bamboo screamer and steel, as shown on this slide, you can see that the gas emission is very low. Fourthly, I will talk about the policies and standards of a structural bamboo screamer. In 2015, the MRIT and the Ministry of Housing and Urban Rural Development has issued action plan for promoting green building materials production and application, which proposed development of biomass building materials However, in reality, the development is very slow because the core issue is the bamboo structure cannot get license for buildings. This is a great barrier for the further development of wood structure and for the wood, for the bamboo screamer. Luckily, in 20 21, 10 ministries issued opinions on accelerating innovative development bamboo industry, which pointed out that the development direction of the use of bamboo as building materials formulated the development plan of the bamboo industry and strongly supported the development of the bamboo industry. Ever since then, we have uh, other policies and standards being developed like the bamboo screamer GBT and the structural bamboo screamer design standards and the engineering bamboo structures, etc. Over the years, we can see the development of the structural bamboo in the construction sector in the past without the applic uh, rules and uh, standards, it is very difficult for the application of the structural bamboo. However, despite the difficulties, we have stepped out a unusual path. Now, bamboo screamer being used in large size structure, arc shaped structure and line structure. In large size structure, bamboo screamer can be widely used due to its performance and its big size. We, here you can see that in Zhaojun Museum in North Inner Mongolia, the bamboo screamer is used. And this is a project in Wanke, an original ancient city of, uh, in Shandong province. All these structures have been combined the bamboo with the traditional Chinese architecture. The bamboo screamer also maintains its features of bamboo, and we have developed arc 
shape the structure. Currently, they're used in Sichuan province, used in the guest house and uh, the botanical garden in Beijing. They and also we have the application of uh, the castle. National Stadium. Mm -hmm. And also, also Shanghai Jinan Temple, 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 Temple Square uh, Life okay. JO construction and the Hunan Changshan uh, restaurant. And also the natural bamboo sprungler also have a linear structure. It's quite stable in both height and height. It, uh, the resilience can be as uh, 300 to one. And the length is less than uh, 180 to one. So currently it's being used in the Beijing Victoria ga Gallery and the Beijing by the Li Motor City the uh, Sichuan Chengdu First Hotel, as well as Beijing Courier House. And uh, China for a season in Kunming of Yunnan. And this structure has a really um, beautiful structure and it shows the elegance of the bamboo material and also reserve the natural structure or natural texture of a bamboo. And in the end, I'd like to thank the organizing committee who offered us this opportunity to talk with each other. I'd also like to thank the team and the Mr. Yuan Ju uh, for your long-term support. And also, I'd like to thank the uh, colleagues who has been supporting us. Look forward for your cooperation and discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yu. You talk about the bamboo scrumber of its um, techniques, performance, policies, as well as applications. So we had a better understanding of uh, scrumber uh, bamboo. If we have any questions, we can send the question in the chat box. We will answer these kind of questions all together after the, all the presentation. Thank you again. Yes, we would like to invite Madam Lu Yun from the China Academy of Forestry, and uh, she is the, in the works in the Research Institute of Food Industry of a China's Academy of Forestry, and she will talk about the research progress in super molecule science of wood and uh, bamboo. Welcome, Madam Lu. Please open the camera, thank you. Please unmute yourself. Lu Madam Lu, would you please unmute yourself? <clears throat> Madam Lu, do you know how to unmute yourself? It's on the, the bottom left corner. Okay, great.
。卢老师，您重新共享一下屏幕。可以看到了吗 ？Can you see my screen? Yes. 可以，能听到，没问题。And we can hear you perfectly. 好像是网络。Sorry, the connection is not quite stable. We cannot hear you. All right, Madam Lu, we cannot hear you. Uh, maybe we can invite the third speaker. Do, uh, are you fine with the arrangements? Madam Oh, sorry, Madam Lu has some problem with the con in connection. So we would like to invite Professor Li Haitao from the Nanjing Forestry University to give her a speech. <clears throat> Mr. Li is from the civil engineering department and the vice dean of this department. He has been working in the basic and research and application research of engineering bamboo. He will talk about engineering bamboo research and application. Let's welcome. Thank you for the you know uh, organizer committee to give me the opportunity to present my research. Uh, my presentation can be divided into four parts. Uh, firstly, I just uh, introduce my university briefly. Uh, Nanjing First University, originally from Central University in 1902. Now it's 120 uh, years. So the transportation for our university is very convenient. It's very close to line three. And uh, this line connect uh, uh, both Nanjing River Station and the Nanjing South River Station and Nanjing Airport. So uh, the campus is very beautiful, which uh, particular for its uh, flowers. So welcome to Nanjing First University. And for me, I'm from College of Civil Engineering. Now uh, this college has about 140 staffs and 2,000 students. So the second part is I'll introduce about some information or research about laminated bamboo lumber, which we call the, uh, we can simplify it as LBL. So the original, uh, original bamboo can be cut into uh, bamboo tubes with a certain length. And then all bamboo tubes can be disassembled into original combs. Both the inner part and the outer part can be removed. So we can uh, call the bamboo strips. So after boiling all bamboo strips and uh, finished the uh, uh, ceramization uh, process, bamboo strips uh, can be glued together to form a single layer and then uh, can be formed into uh, structural elements. We call the uh, middle bamboo uh, lumber. Suppose the, 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 the mechanical performance of laminated bamboo lumber have been uh, you know, uh, uh, researched by our teams. A lot of papers uh, related to uh, the compression tensile, uh, shear bending, and so on. 
uh, has been published. If you are interested in, uh, you can download the papers. Uh, so uh, besides the basic mechanical performance test, we have done a large quantity of so, uh, experiments about the beam test, both under uh, static loading and uh, cyclic loading. And the column test, so considering the cylinder resolution ratio, eccentric, eccentric, eccentric uh, value, and so on. Uh, a large quantity of tests about column tests have been done in our teams. So besides the structural elements such as beams and columns, we also have done a large, a large quantities of tests about connections. So these papers about the structural elements research. So laminated bamboo lumber can be used very widely in our everyday life. So these, these slices use the application area uh, for such as the desk, chairs, boards, and so on. So besides the everyday life, Laminate bamboo lumber can be used for constructions. So this project was finished in Jinggangshan by Sentai Company. It's named as Lotus Pavilion. It's public structures. So uh, this project uh, was finished, uh, was set up in uh, 2016. It was a laminate bamboo veiler. So uh, the project has a building area of two, 220 uh, square meters. It's a two-story uh, uh, living house. So besides the living house, uh, laminate, bamboo, laminate bamboo can be used for uh, construct the uh, toilets, a public washroom. So these two pro these projects was finished in Nanjing in Qisha Temple, and uh, uh, another you know. Uh, <clears throat> industry, uh, industry garden. So uh, this project I show uh, was uh, finished in 2019. Uh, maybe someone has visited Beijing. Uh, it was uh, ex ex exhibited in the World Gardening Art Exposition. So now I would like to introduce another uh, project uh, which has a building area of 1,000 square meters. It's uh, very large and they, it has three stories. The total uh, height for this structure is 12.8 meters. And the design work, the structure design work was finished by our teams. The whole construction was finished by uh, Ganjo Sentai Company. The connections for this building uh, was chosen uh, as the steel uh, boat connections. So this project was finished uh, in 2010 and uh, it lies in uh, Guangxi province in Ziyuan uh, County. It's all the, uh, so before, so this, this is the, uh, you know, this, uh, this house, so before this house is what timber structures, as uh, the timber structures was decayed, so uh, the owner want to use uh, new construction materials to substitute it. We suggest uh, laminate bamboo lumber. So the design uh, work, the structure design work was finished uh, by our teams. So now this project was already uh, finished and used. So this project was still under construction. It will be finished this month. Uh, the project has a building area of 700 square meters. It has three stories. The total uh, height is, uh, is about 15.8 meters. Now, uh, we just finished another project. The outside of the you know, <clears throat> and this building was, will be uh, uh, set up in, in the coming months. So 
uh, we tried originally we tried to use the laminated bamboo lumber as the floor uh, uh, due to some reasons uh, now uh, we may choose uh, uh, as the screen burn bamboo so this is uh, another project which designed by our teams is a pity that uh, this project uh, hasn't been finished finally because uh, you know the owner choose another building more tools. They, they, saw, they, they, they take it, uh, laminate bamboo lumber is too expensive. So uh, they changed the building more tools. It's a, it's a great pity. Anyway, uh, we try to, uh, uh, you know, try to persuade other, you know, uh, companies to set up these uh, structures. Maybe in the future, uh, this building can be finished in another places or cities. So besides the former projects, we also finished uh, several other projects. So this one is bridge and that one is for the main gate. Now, uh, I would like to introduce some research and applications about parallel, parallel strand bamboo lumbers which some researchers were also called a uh, screen brain bamboo. As you know, Professor Yu has introduced the manufacturing process uh, just now. Uh, I just passed this process. So our team has done a large quantities of uh, experiments about the basic mechanical properties of uh, parallel bamboo uh, lumbers. A lot of papers have been published. So besides the basic mechanical properties test, the structural element uh, uh, research has been done uh, as well in our team. So these uh, slices choose the beam test and the column test. Uh, the re related papers have been published by our teams. So if you are interested, you can download so screen by bamboo can be also used very widely in our everyday life. These slices choose, uh, you know, some boards, some chairs, some furniture, and so on, that screen by bamboo can be used. You know, in 2008, uh, the academician, uh, Professor Zhang and Professor Liu has set up uh, a building in Nanjing uh, Forest University. It's a, a two-story building. The columns, the columns, so was made of, you know, uh, laminated uh, PBSL, parallel bamboo strand lumber. But for the beams, uh, laminated bamboo lumber was chosen. So this house, uh, as for this house, three main engineering bamboo uh, products were used. Parallel bamboo strand lumber, laminated bamboo lumber, and uh, you know, woven glued bamboo. So three main engineered bamboo products were used. Welcome to Nanjing First University. If you uh, whenever come, yeah, I would like to show you uh, this building. So besides the former project, uh, we worked with uh, some companies and try to uh, you know. Uh, uh, set up more, you know, building examples in, in, in reality, in industry. So these projects are finished in uh, different cities of China. Now the final pass, I would like to introduce some research and uh, applications about FRP engineered bamboo. You know, FRP is a niche, is a industry uh, composite materials. Uh, there are many different kinds of FRP categories, such as AFRP, CFRP, GFRP, uh, DFRP, BFRP, and so on. So uh, as for the shapes, you can see there are many different kinds of FRP products, such as cloth, grid, and board tubes, and also the steels, and so on. Uh, so both the, uh, the FRP, such as AFRP, AFRP, BFRP, CFRP, GFRP, uh, we have, we use, our team use uh, these FRP products 
to strengthen the columns and the beams. A large quantity of tests has been done in our teams uh, eight years ago. Uh, it's a pity that not too many papers published about this research, but our team have done uh, such research very early. <clears throat> so besides uh, using FRP clause to strength, we also use FRP bus. So these slices shows the uh, you know, strengthening process uh, with FRP, FRP bar. And uh, some papers have been published about this uh, research, but not, not, depend, not too many compared to the for, further research. Uh, now for, uh, you know, we, we try to collaborate with many international organizations and uh, the, uh, this conference was launched by uh, Nanjing First University, uh, University College London, and Yimba uh, since, 19, uh, since 2019. So this year is the third uh, you know, uh, uh, activities. Uh, welcome to join these activities. Uh, for this project, we, we, we try to set up a bridge with the length, with a span of term meters. Uh, we use the FRP to strengthen uh, some parts, some key point, key parts of the structure elements, particularly, you know, you for the foot of the structure elements, uh, we wind, uh, use, uh, we use the, the GFRP to strength and also to keep it to be decayed. How these three structures are finished for the first two series of these activities. Now you can, if you, whenever you come to our university, uh, you can see the project. So finally, I would introduce one journal which launched by uh, our team, uh, Sustainable Structures. It's a free journal and uh, it's mainly about sustainable structures. Bamboo is one of, one of uh, the key, you know, sustainable structures uh, in civil engineering area. Uh, if uh, welcome, you know, uh, submit papers to this journal. Okay, thank you very much. That's my presentation. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Li, who have introduced to us the technique of three uh, engineered uh, bamboos and their applications. Thank you very much. Now let's invite our next speaker, Professor Lu Yun. She will talk about the research progress in supramolecular sites of wood and bamboo. Professor Lu thinks that the internet does not work very well. Professor Lu? Professor Lu, your internet bandwidth is too narrow and uh, seems that it does not work. Professor Lu, we still cannot hear you.
卢老师，要不我们先安排下一个，然后。Professor Lu, is it okay that we move on to the next speaker, and we will be waiting for you later? Okay. 嗯、then our next speaker is、uh, Professor Shao Changchun from、uh, Chinese University of Hong Kong. His research is、uh, the areas of、uh, modern bamboo structure, application of a long span bamboo structure. Today he will talk about the research and practice on modern bamboo structure. Professor Shaw, the floor is yours. You can hear me, right? Yes, very good. First of all, I'd like to thank the organizer for inviting me to this、uh, congress. It is also my great honor to share with you our practice. I'm from.、Uh, The Chinese University of Hong Kong, and、uh, my area is、uh, on research and practice on architecture. And today, I will share with you what we have done. The previous speakers have talked about、uh, their experience, and now let me talk about、uh, the. Application and possibilities of original bamboo in architecture. I'm very interested in bamboo structures because in villages I have seen some very effective structures which look very simple but very wise architecture, very smart architecture. That is why I have developed my interest in bamboo. Thousands of years ago in China, in civil works and、uh, architecture and construction, many pioneers have done their experiments, have many successful、uh, attempts, and also at that time there was a lack of concrete. That is why bamboo were widely used in arch structures. And、uh, my, me and my team, we have、uh, done a lot of experiments in the labs of the original bamboo. Then there are weaknesses and strengths in architecture. We have done some、uh, tests based on the result of the tests. We try to. Improve our first,、uh, research. This is the first case in Chongqing. A bridge is was built. This is our design, like a assembled bridge. It's just a, a rough idea. The bridge is thirteen point five meters. We separate or divided the bridge into six parts, and、uh, assembled and then put on the river. This is the final product, the final look of the bridge. It is very compatible with the surroundings. This is on the bridge. Later on, the bridge has become a community center for the village events. Later on, we have some other experiments. This is another case. In practice, we have、uh, we have tried try different tests in, in with different span or fly past. This span is eighteen meters, and this structure is twelve meters. And this is an arc with a length of twenty meters. And we have also、uh, tried different treatment of the material about its durability. 
about the dura durability. And we also use some oil material to do the um, stock. And there are different results coming from the test. And some have a deeper color or darker color can be used in outdoors. And some come out of a lighter color, can be, which can be used in indoors. And this is the um, pictures we took from the laboratory. So we find out that for raw material, for raw bamboo and uh, and uh, uh, compressed uh, uh, bamboos, we have the treatment and add glues inside, which can be um, can be fire assistant and pesticide assistant. Uh, resistant. And later on, we will introduce the um, exploration in the fire resistance uh, test. We tried the carbonization process, uh, for example, to get rid of uh, the um, X of the worms, and we have a different connection, like traditional connection or improved connection. And these different connections are used in different cases based on different spans and the uh, treatment in terms of the durability and the connection. We do not expect from of um, um, perfect status in every status, but we hope at least it is uh, cost effective and uh, acceptable in terms of a complexity in construction and our probability. We, we hope there will be a balance between the different factors. So that is the um, what we need in the process of design because sometimes we think technology in certain status might not be overused or we need to um, be compromised to fit in the environment. This is the second bridge, which is a place for forum or um, community center. It is another um, area for the uh, tourism spot in the rural, in the rural site. This is the uh, a design or a bamboo and a rattan pavilion. Uh, we work with um, Mr. Marisha from Italy, and he had done the com uh, conceptual design, and we have finished the following work. This is an arc structure, and we use raw bamboo. And this is the picture from the um, structure uh, from the construction site. It is a arc indication, and we only had ten months to finish the project. This is the a project. Uh, this this bridge is fifty five meters long located in the National Park in Yui Mountain in Fujian province. This span is um, 15 meters. This is the picture after the delivery or after completion. They have, because they have different configurations. So in the design process, I will also consider the um, features and uh, weaknesses of the local environment, because we are, uh, in some bigger span case, I will use a arc structure, and we'll also add some steel material. And uh, this is the arc bridge, and we also need to consider the conversion of the uh, bamboo material and uh, a concrete material. 
the material might not be 100% uh, standard, but uh, we can realize standardization and connection part. This is the a, a pavilion roof with a 24 meters di of a diameter. It can deliver less is up to eight meters and they have special triangular bamboo truth. And this structure actually is suitable for uh, um, bamboo structure. So based on steel structure or wood structure, we also consider the shortcomings of a bamboo structure and we try the adaptiveness. We try to adapt to the bamboo structure. This project actually, uh, the height is eight meters and we use steel structure. And also there is a uh, connection between the, wood between the bamboo structure and the steel structure. This is this site is in Yibin in Sichuan, the International Wood um, Bamboo Transaction Center. The total area is 115 square meters. And this is uh, done by Xi'an Construction Engineering Green Building Group. We are responsible for the design work. So this is the bird view from the top. Uh, in the center is the main pavilion. Well, we have the side pavilion on the two sides. This is a uh, view from the inter from domestic view. We have the bamboo arc, and we also have steel um, arc to connect both the bamboo and the, the roof. So this uh, bamboo can be used, can use the um, compressed uh, bamboo or a uh, glued bamboo. So we can see here there are seven um, raw bamboos and connect with other parts with steel con con uh, structure. I would like to go a little bit deep into this picture because for many, uh, for all the biomass material, you will ask question about durability and uh, water uh, fire resistance uh, nature. Uh, we seem to lose the speaker. Sorry, we cannot hear from the speaker. Uh, uh, the speaker is back. So, um, we have done measures to take to improve the fire resistance. So we developed a bamboo arc spray system. If the material is flammable or easier to catch fire compared to other uh, regular material, we need to improve the um, fire resistance uh, ability. So for this structure, we add the spray work during fire I and mean, the to cool the bamboo arc during fire which will control the temperature of the bamboo um, below 100 degrees so that it will not lose too much of its capacity. So, um, it means that we add another water film in the surface of the bamboo arc. We also invite experts to check on site and they are all, they all praise of this kind of design. In addition, we also spent a year to um, pass all the fire resistance tests. So I think we cannot uh, avoid the fire resistance topic, 
but it can be solved. So that's my uh, um, my suggestion for all of you who are interested in the fire resistance uh, problem of the bamboo material. And we are designing um, bigger bamboo products. We are also using the same idea. That's so much for my presentation. I also would like to thank the audience for your time. And in the end, I would like to say that in the whole bamboo structure and the uh, wood structure sector, I think we could use different material, including the raw bamboo and the crude bamboo, and they can find their own suitable applications, and they can even be used together in a uh, combination, like the this project I'm presenting uh, earlier. So the side structure can be can use the uh, fluid bamboo and they can use their own uh, strengths. That's so much for my presentation. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Dr. Shao. Dr. Shao have introduced uh, raw bamboo and uh, um, different types of uh, bamboos use and the combination of the three. I think it's a very good point because this is also, uh, and it's also another inspiration for us. Next, we would like to invite uh, Mr. Ravi Juti Decker from Avo Transro. He attended the internal river of uh, India to from 2012, and he has uh, developed the and he will talk about the water the boat. This will come, Robert Becker. Uh, please unmute yourself. Thank you. Mr. Uh, sir, could you share your screen? I can't hear you. Sorry, Robert Decker. Ravi Darkar, please. Please choose your English channel. Sorry, sorry, Ravi Dakar, I can't hear you. Please clear, click, uh, share sound.
Please share your PPT, PowerPoint. Please share your PowerPoint. Yeah,请重新进入。不好意思,那个。Sorry, due to the technical issue, we can still not have a deck. So we now will have a Professor Lu Yun. Lu Yun's network internet is working now. We'd like to ask Ravi to uh, improve his network internet connection. Please log out and then log in. Maybe it will be better. Okay, Professor Lu Yun, please share your PowerPoints. Can you see it? Can you hear me? Yes, very good, very good. <coughs> Sorry about the internet connection. Sorry for the trouble. So let me start and I'd like to thank the moderator. It is my good honor to attend this second global bamboo and Tibetan Congress. Thank the organizer for the invitation. Today I will talk about the research progress. And this is my lab. Currently, I'm uh, the director of uh, the project. Our research interests include three wood and bamboo, supramolecular science, biomass, etc. Today's my report outline supramolecular structure in wood and bamboo, tailoring and application of wood structure and uh, bamboo structure. Finally, summary and outlook. Firstly, let me talk about the supramolecular structure in uh, firstly concept of a supramolecular is uh, there are two or more kinds of molecules that are combined uh, by intermolecular interaction to form complex and organized aggregates, maintain certain integrity and make them high clear microstructure and macro characteristics. Intermolecular interactions refer to non covalent bonds, including electrostatic interaction, hydrogen bonds, van der Waals forces, metal ion coordination bonds, hydrophobic interactions, etc. Through the non covalent bonds, it can achieve a stable structure and resist the response to the outside. Wood and bamboo are natural materials with multi-level structures. This meeting is being recorded. This meeting is being recorded. Um, meeting is being recorded. 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 Meeting Ball layer and the micro nano scale aggregates from the molecular level of components. The molecular chains of uh, cellulose are tightly assembled through ventable force and strong hydrogen bonds. This basic style. Uh, element with a transfer size of three to five nanometers formed 
and uh, the basic elements are connected through the interaction of non-covalent bonds. At the same time, we can see that uh, their interaction water molecules also combine with hydrogen groups of wood components through so hydrogen bonds so that water molecules can penetrate into cellulose aggregates. And also we have a more active electrostatic environment during the drying process. The moisture will also have a certain impact on the aggregate structure. At a high level, there is a, a thin layer of aggregates in the cell wall, which is a typical cell premier molecular, uh, molecular aggregate structure in wood. This structure also exists in the uh, MEM materials. So secondly, I will talk about the regulation of wood supramocular structure and related applications. In the secondary wall of the cell wall, the structure of uh, aggregate thin layer has not been studied clearly. There is a view that the cellulose microfibrous in the whole secondary wall are arranged layer by layer. Another view holds that the, it's randomly distributed. We have analyzed uh, this uh, problem and we invented this precise dissociation technology so the precise analysis of the structure of the cell wall in the early stage. So here we have uh, a thin aggregate layer with a thickness of 10 nanometers and a width of more than 1,000 micros. Later on, it is used in the wood. And we have proven that uh, this uh, technology can be used widely. Also, we observe the thin layer surface of aggregates through the imaging technology. There is not only link, Ning, but also hemicellulose and uh, cellulose. So there is a cellulose in the middle of the whole la thin layer. So it has acquired a very good mechanical properties. So we made use of these characteristics. We peel off the thin aggregate layer and use it on the electronic mask of the lithium metal battery to regulate the uniform uh, disposition of the entire ion on it. You can see that when use the metal uh, mask, so it will grow and uh, while using our thin layer, we can see that uh, the superficial uh, on the surface, it will not grow and create a sharp structure. It is a very inevitable choice for future secondary battery. However, it is not used commercially because it's a stability issue. When we use this aggregate thin layer on the bottom battery, we can greatly improve uh, this, uh, address this problem. It is used to be eight cycles. Now it can be improved to 800 cycles. So its stability has been enhanced greatly. This soft pack battery, if it can be used in an electric car, then it will prolong the life of uh, the cells significantly. The supramolecular can adjust the wood, the X-ray tissue also has a mechanical function. It is very important 
adaptive organization on the cross section of the whole wood. And uh, it is also one of the main reasons for the compre compressive strength of whole non whole uh, section. The leaf spring, leaf structure is uh, very similar to the spring on the car. On the car, it is this spring can reduce the pressure and it will attenuate the energy through the sliding and the deformation of the steel plate and it can absorb the energy and uh, this uh, wood ray tissue is very similar to the leaf spring. The lignin content in the thin layer cells is much lower than that in the whole tube package and the whole cell wall is much thinner than the cell wall of the tube. We can remove the lignin in the connection part between the whole thin wall cell and the tube package through chemical treatment. Then we can realize a regulation of the ray structure. We can get a new wood based material similar to the leaf spring structure. Furthermore, we also pass the low temperature heat. Uh, we also have the low temperature heat treatment remove the lingering from the wall. After the treatment, the whole material has obtained excellent elasticity and uh, deformation ability. You can see in the video, during the compression process, the microscope after external force is removed, it can be stored to its original shape. It can also obtain uh, its uh, height and also very good qualities. And secondly, thirdly, I will talk about the tailoring of wood. Similar to wood, a bamboo also has a multi-level structure and a bamboo grows faster and has higher carbon fixation efficiency. It has a huge potential for application. Later, uh, recently, we have uh, done some uh, work or in this area. First is uh, we use bamboo to make a catalytic uh, micro reactor. Uh, the bamboo pipes can transport water and uh, thought. And for the micro, for the Cavillatory catalytic reactor, the requirement is 10,000 to 15,000 for the specific surface area per unit volume of a bamboo pipe. It is as high as 31,000. So it is in line with the requirement of the design. Therefore, we use this process to use bamboo conduits and to optimize the nano catalytic to improve its catalytic efficiency. We achieve a continuous catalytic reduction of nitro aromatic compounds when it is used for 11 hours. The catalytic efficiency is still as high as 90%. So it shows high stability and high efficiency for the bamboo uh, conducts. It uh, provides enough space for the catalytic reactions. It is uh, very stable and uh, all these uh, chemical uh, components can have a very good results of the chemical reactions. And uh, the bamboo is a very flexible material. We have uh, tapped its uh, potential in this regard. Bamboo uh, is very strong, and though it is very flexible, it can bend. It is very flexible. So we use uh, 
we have developed some very advanced material. It is like a coat. It is uh, surrounding the cells. And also here, you can see a lot of holes. This holes provide channels for the exchange of matters and also it can store energy. Interestingly, for the bamboo structure and its functions, it is very similar to the electrode in the fiber shaped supercapacitator. We have some active material here on the outside. So we then uh, apply this in the bamboo structure. We are making a, a leverage its flexibility to for the thin uh, layer. They are like uh, active uh, material. This is the its flexibility. High energy density. It has uh, outstanding mechanical flexibility and a low capacity loss. So it is uh, very. Uh, it can be used widely in smart devices such as uh, bracelet. And this way, we can have very good use of the bamboo. Summary and outlook. First, the purpose of wood and bamboo supramolecular science is to deeply tap the potential and comprehensively improve the original performance of wood and bamboo. For bamboo, both the vascular bundle transport channels at the tissue level and the fiber cells at the cell level have functional development space. Second, uh, secondly, in the world's low carbon economic development, the wood and bamboo industry itself has low energy consumption and uh, negative carbon emissions. It is an inevitable trend to develop low carbon, high value wood and bamboo products. The research on wood supramolecular science can help the development of the industry. I'd like to finally thank our collaborators and the National Natural Science Foundation of China. I welcome your cooperation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your presentation from the macro level and the micro you, level. Madam, you have uh, elaborated the issue the very well. Wooden material in this country. Next, we would like to invite Mr. Ravi Decker. Next, we would like to invite Mr. Ravi Decker to introduce his presentation. Yes, I hope I'm audible this time. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Thank you very much. It was quite a so I'll start my presentation. Uh, is everything is visible on the screen? Yes, yes, it's yeah, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Ravi Deka. I am the founder of India's only startup, which is working in the field of inland navigation. My presentation is constructing strong, safe, lightweight, and sustainable river and coastal boats from bamboo mat boat laminates. So we are trying to address three problem statements. One, which are endemic uh, for most of the developing world, Sub-Saharan Africa, South and East Asia, and South America. One is that of rampant floods, which are happening every year in a very unpredictable scale, not only in traditional flood-prone areas, but because of climate change in areas which never even saw floods earlier. The second problem is primitive boats, which are again used in the same areas, primarily made from wood using uh, very primitive construction methods. And thirdly, the huge number of river accidents which are happening month after month, costing hundreds of lives every year. So the backdrop, as I said, is the river traffic across South Asia, Africa, and South America is very primitive because of primitive wooden boats. All these boats are very leaky. 
the a lot of water comes inside they are underpowered unstable with poor maneuverability and they are very often overloaded the tech, it is primary responsibility is the usage of traditional materials and traditional building systems along with it they are also mechanically very primitive very primitive steering systems which make them very capsize prone like in the months of september and october 2022 both accidents took actually it's not 60 when i was preparing the powerpoint presentation by the time it is today another 20 you know the ppt 一直没有翻页 sorry you are not turning your slides uh, yes i am in the third slide actually right now i okay, okay. you're not seeing any changes okay 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 so so in yes, india the movement we cannot see the turn of the pages it's still in the first page I am so sorry. I am in one minute. I'll try to do this again. Uh, is there any change? Because I am on a very high speed uh, internet bandwidth. We cannot see any change. It still stay in the first page. Yeah, that's what I'm also noticing on the other screen. Uh, is there any way that uh, the copy I had sent it to you, which can be shared? Uh, is there any change? No. Okay. Please, please go. On. Okay. I mean, can you share the presentation which I had sent to you? Because I am seeing that there is no changes, but I am changing on my screen. Please share. Oh. Huh? Okay. Yes. Now you can see the change. I think I'm visible, right? Yes. Now it works. Yeah. Right. So there have been more than actually ninety no, 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 lives. No, no, no. Uh, I I can see. Uh, yeah. More than ninety lives in India, fifty one in Bangladesh, and eleven in Cambodia, and eighty nine in Nigeria, which only in the two months is the number of deaths which has been caused by river accidents in these primitive boats, and a disproportionate. Uh, part of these victims are actually women and children. Plus, the rural economy, which is not really looked upon very much, is very dependent on river boats everywhere, all across the world. But then they are hardly ever modernized. Nobody is even bothered about it. And in most of these places, people cannot afford to buy new, I mean, fiberglass or aluminium boats. So, our solution is we wanted to develop. a process we should use a sustainable and a locally available strong material to build an aff affordable boat so we developed a very simple boat building technology with a sustainable bamboo based composites it's a mold free process unlike fiberglass so and we have been using bamboo mat board as a core material for building a composite using epoxy and fiberglass cloth lamination on both sides so we have been using 11 mm and 12 mm bamboo mat boards for building the boat hulls and epoxy and fiberglass for encasing this material so and we for the resin we have used a very high uv resistant industrial aerospace grade uh, epoxy resin to give maximum strength a 300 gsm e type fiberglass cloth for laminating the outer side of the hull and a 200 gsm roving on the inner side which makes it's a very lightweight and a very strong construction our boats are approximately 85% bamboo 10% polymers which includes the pf resin used for making the boards and our own epoxy which we use for lamination and only 5% of the weight is fiberglass cloth the expected lifespan of these boats is between 10 to 15 years so what is the usp the us the unique selling proposition of our boats is our boats are very safe why because they are very strong very tough they are watertight they are rot resistant they are insect and borer proof and they are almost fully biodegradable which is very important unlike fiberglass boats which don't degrade for almost 200 years the composite boats have a tensile strength and compressive strength in the range of 130 to 150 megapascals per mm square which is around 3 to 4 times higher than a normal bamboo mat board of the same thickness plus the very big advantage is the multi layered you have a hatch construction of the mat boards which is a very cross ply 
in several levels, it has got excellent energy absorption and dissipation properties. So even if the boat has a slight impact somewhere, the, all the energy gets absorbed in the hull without any crack or breaches. So we are coating the outer hull with a gel coat layer to give even a harder and a more better waterproof protective layer, but it is again in several microns in thickness only. Plus the vessels are 50% lighter than an equivalent size fiberglass boat or a wood solid wood boat, which makes them very efficient because they need much lower powered engines. They can run faster or they can carry more cargo because with a similar displacement, the weight is less than half. So our process, we have seen that it can be used for building very small boats, like a two-person canoe to as much as a 15, 20 meter, 20 to 30 passenger multi-hull vessel without any problems at all. And the construction system requires very minimal investment in tooling and a very basic skill set. Virtually any untrained labor, couple of months, and they can be taught how to build these boats. Another very important part which we ask is, well, can they be classified? What about the classification? So such laminated engineered wood or plywood cord boats are accepted by classification, international classification societies by Bureau of Veritas or the, even the Chinese register of shipping. So the process I'll just explain is it's very simple. As you can see, first we have the mat boards arriving. Then the boats are, the parts are cut into individual pieces because the boards, they come in standard sizes of four feet by eight feet or 1.2 meters by 2.4 meters. The, now we need very long sections. So they are joined together by a process which we call scarfing where a wedge is cut in the side and they are pasted with a mixture of epoxy resin and bamboo dust. And they are compressed together as you can see in the fourth photograph. Then the individual parts are tied together with ties, cable ties and tensioned with straps, which causes pre-tensioning and increases the strength of the mat board because they are stressed. Now, wherever we have joined them, they are joined again, glued together with epoxy bamboo dust and then covered with fiberglass tape to give more strength on the joints. And as you can see from the final photograph, we can have very complex designs extremely strong, unflexible monocoque designs, which can be made from several sections of bamboo mat board, joined together with fiberglass and epoxy. Once the basic frame is, the bottom is built, so you can see that we have installed the rib frames. The rib frames can be made from bamboo mat board. They can be made from bamboo lumber, laminated bamboo lumber. And we have been trying different materials, but to keep it all homogeneously bamboo. So once the frames are installed, we have installed the sides, which are done in the same way. They are pasted and then covered with epoxy and fiberglass. They're laminated. You can see in the fourth photograph that they are like, you, know, you have a very transparent kind of a translucent cover for the hulls. And once the entire boat is constructed, as you can see in the fifth photograph, we have installed already a floor. And once the boat is built, we are covered with a gel port and the, there you can see that a boat, visually there is no difference with a fiberglass boat. And since this model, which I'm building is a trimer and which needs two narrow outriggers on the side, these are the photographs of the outrigger pontoons, which are also made from bamboo mat board and they are filled with foam. So that to make them basically unsinkable. So to compare our boats with traditional wooden boats, we have selected three major types of wood which are being used around the world, especially basically in South Asia, Africa, which is teak, mango, and gurjan. And just to breeze through, you can see the density of wood is much higher because we especially use the low density mat board because of the additional strength which you'll be getting from the fiberglass epoxy laminate. So where teak has got 688 kilograms per meter square or gurjan very heavy, sorry, meter cube, uh, and got gurjan is 660 kilograms per meter cube. Our composite mat board is only 462 kilograms per cubic meter. 
Another important part is traditional wooden boats. The plank thickness is between 20 to 25 millimeter. The frames are much, much thicker. We are using our hulls is only 11 millimeters thick. So effective weight per meter square, having much higher strength than traditional wood. So where we have got 13.76 kilograms per meter cube in terms of teak or 15 over 15 kilograms per meter square in Gurjan, it's only five meters, sorry, five kilograms per square meter is our weight. We also don't have any water absorption because water absorption under pressure was only 5%. And we don't have pressure, high, high, high temperature or pressure. So we tried to maximum how much water we can squeeze into it. So it was only 5%. We are not using any nails, bolts. There is no traditional like tar and rope for sealing. So it's a completely monocoque design using only epoxy and fiberglass for sealing the entire body together. So you have got one monocoque body, which is a one unitary construction. So there is virtually no place for any water leakages to happen. In terms of, again, the ecological footprint, we have compared how our boat ranks, ranks with uh, wooden boats, traditional wooden boats, and aluminum boats and fiberglass boats. So if we take the carbon footprint of the individual materials used, our boat has a cleaner carbon footprint than even wooden boats. And it is much, much lower than fiberglass. On top of it, bamboo is six times more sustainable than even hardwood. And our boats are as in the 85% made from bamboo, uh, bamboo. They are 85% biodegradable. So we can even use them as firewood at the end. I mean, not in, I mean, or they can be just left to rot and then biological process will take it. Plus our process has virtually, I won't say zero waste, very, very low waste much lesser than a fiberglass boat. So it has got a low carbon footprint. It is much lighter weight, so it has got much lower emissions. There's, it's biodegradable and it's virtually uh, waste-free. So this is our first prototype which we built, which is a 5.4 meter boat made for extremely shallow water. It can carry eight passengers. It, has a, it requires a draft of only four and a half inches. It was made, this design was selected to be used for flood relief operations and forest and river patrolling by the police and the forest department. It can also be used for ecotourism. It uses our bamboo biocomposite construction everywhere. This Every part in this boat is used with bamboo mat board. So we are also, it can be powered with a petrol outboard motor. It can also be powered with a, it be made even cleaner with an electric outboard motor. So our second prototype is a trimaran for which we got the design from the Food and Agriculture Organization. As you can see, this is the final, how it will look. Uh, the hull as it was constructed from the bamboo mat board laminates and how the finished hull looks like. So we are awaiting trials. We are awaiting for a clearance from the government to allow us to try this boat on the rivers. In terms of cost comparison, we've seen that we try to primary comparison is not really with the wooden boats, but with fiberglass boats. So a six person shallow water boat, which we showed you will cost around $1,579. Whereas a fiberglass molded fiberglass boat of exactly the same size and proportions will cost more than 3,289, almost $3,300. The wooden boat is significantly cheaper, almost half the size but it will be much heavier, at least four times heavier. It will not have the draft. It will not have that life. But once we start building higher, bigger size boats, like a 24, 25 passenger trimaran, which we showed you, uh, the prices are already, it's, it will cost 7,800 USD. I mean, nine, nine, almost 7,900 US dollars for our bamboo composite boat construction, but it will cost almost 20,000 US dollars to build it from fiberglass. So it is now only slightly more expensive than a wooden boat. 
But if we go for even larger boats like a catamaran, we can we don't have really any pricing for the wooden ones. It's very difficult to make them like that. But it's twelve thousand five hundred US dollars for a bamboo mat composite boat, whereas it is more than thirty two thousand US dollars for a fiberglass boat. So these are for the basic hull prices without including any of the mechanical parts. So market segments which you feel will be most benefited primarily are the as a replacement to the village ferries, private ferries for carrying cargo and passengers. For the safety, the more higher efficiency, lighter weight and higher speeds and plus the affordability. So they are going to get a much superior product having all the advantages of a fiberglass boat made from a sustainable product is very easily repairable and at a price which is only slightly higher than a wooden boat. The second part are the government agencies for relief agencies for floods, for, for, for river patrolling, because again, the advantage of much lighter weight, long lifespan, sustainability. Then you have the tourism industry, like in the adventure wildlife, we are very conscious about using more eco-friendly products like river cruises. And of course, there is the small private for recreational boating and for fishing purposes. So to give you a summary of our project, so bamboo-based composite boats can easily replace unsafe country boats, which are prevalent all around the developing world. They are very tough, they are safe, they are watertight, and they can be built with efficient modern designs. They are very easy to build. They require no molds and only minimal investment in power tools and very require a very small, low skill set requirement. The epoxy fiberglass sandwich laminate provides high tensile and compressive strengths, at most at par with fiberglass. Bamboo mat board core provides high impact absorption, high energy dissipation, which you don't have in wood. It is at par, I would say it is at par with fiberglass. These boats are much more economical to run because they are very lightweight. They're much lighter weight than either wood or fiberglass or metallic boats. The bamboo composite boats provide all the advantages of a fiberglass vessel, but at a, much, at a fraction of the cost, at a much lower cost. They are sustainable. They have the greenest footprint of any composite boat. They are almost fully biodegradable. And the such wood core composite hulls are accepted by many classification societies, ship classification societies. So there is not going to be any problem in registering these boats. So I would like to end my presentation by showing you a few traditional bamboo boats which are prevalent around the world. So we have not really invented the wheel. We have made it much stronger, much more efficient. So you have the traditional bamboo raft from which are from China. Then you have the Vietnamese coracle, which is essentially a bamboo basket laminated with resin or with varnish for waterproofing. You have the Indian coracle, which is closer to the Middle Eastern coracle in terms of its design because it has a bamboo frame, but earlier it was covered with leather. Now it's just covered with plastic and tar. And you have the traditional bamboo Vietnamese wooden woven boats, which are very similar in construction to the coracle, but they are of the traditional boat size. Now, these are essentially single layer boats, which are just covered with a laminate for waterproofing. So they don't have the strength which we have developed in our process. So with this, I would like to conclude my presentation and to thank you very much for the opportunity given to me. And my apologies for all the technical, apologies for all the technical issues which I had. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ravi Dekker, for your presentation. We have seen the use of bamboo in making boats. Our next uh, speaker is uh, Luan, Professor Luan, who is also a member of our project. We have done a lot of research and have achieved some result. And today, Luan Yu will talk about 
a novel bamboo engineering material processed by cutting and uh, densification. The floor is yours. My name is Luan Yu from Institute of New Bamboo and Rattan Basic Bill Materials or SABR. I'm very glad to be here and I feel honored at giving speech. Today, I'd like to talk about a novel bamboo engineer material processed by flighting and densification. Bamboo is one of the most abundant biomass, uh, biomass resources in the earth and it has been created giant economic, social, and ecological benefits due to its fast growth, versatile properties, easy handling, and so on. With the development of technology and industry, some engineered bamboo products have been developed. One of the greatest, uh, one of the greatest applicated is the lamptey bamboo, and, have, and it has been widely used in construction, furniture, and outdoors. However, in the conventional processing, the actual bamboo trees must be spread on four sides to be rectangular before assembling and growing. This process allows only 30% to 40% of bamboo to be used, and the outmost parts with the highest strength and density is removed. Besides the shape, the structure of bamboo is also special. The vascular bundles embedded in plank materials and uh, uh, the, fr the fraction shows a decreasing trend from the outer layer to the inner layer. In the vascular bundle, the fiber cells with small cavity and thin wall um, play the most crucial role as mechanical support, while the parenchyma tissues, including parenchyma cells, vessels, and sieves, have, cavity, uh, have large cavity and mm -hmm. thin wall. The heterogeneous structure makes the density of bamboo along the thickness direction is uneven and the bamboo comes strongest only towards the outmost part, leaving the rest increasingly weaker, which is unsatisfactory for some applications requiring stability and high strength. So there are two important problems, how to increase the, uh, how to increase the utilization rate of bamboo and how to improve the strength of bamboo. Based on these problems, we propose an integrated treatment combining flighting and densification Actually, bamboo trees were preconditioned to a moist content of 70%. The hot press were used, and the platens were preheated to 170 centigrade or 119 centigrade before the bamboo trees were placed on the bottom platen. The actual bamboo trees were compressed in the radial direction and flattened, followed by continuous compression to denication. The maximum compression pressure was around 3 megapascals, and the, the total duration of the treatment was around 20 minutes. Mm, due to the different initial thickness of the bamboo strips, the, stopping, uh, the, the metal stopping frames with different thickness were used to fix a 44% compression set. And to release them generally during the treatment, the center metal mesh lamptes were used to cover the both sides of bamboo. And the lamptes is a porous metal composite made from multi layer stainless steel wire mesh and centered into one metal panel. There are two important innovations. Uh, firstly, the, uh, the Actually, bamboo trees were preconditioned to a high humid, uh, high moisture content. Uh, with a high temperature, the water inside the bamboo could convert to steam, which could not only effectively soften bamboo, but also reduce the internal stress, avoid spring back, and reduce the formation recovery. Secondly, the steam could result mm -hmm. in a high vapor pressure. Even the treatment was uh, was uh, was conducted at an open system, the pressure cannot be reduced sufficiently due to the last side of bamboo. When the platen were opened, the compressed bamboo was prone to a bulge or even explosion as shown in the picture. To solve these problems, we, uh, the center metal mesh lamps were placed between the strips and the platens as stem releasers. The high pressure vapor could be released from bamboo through the pores provided by the lamps, And finally, the treated bamboo with fine and smooth surface were produced. During the treatment, the bamboo strips were flattened followed by intensified. 
the ashy bamboo trees were flattened to a regular shape with decreasing thickness, and the moist content of treated bamboo was around 7% to 8%, which indicated that the treated bamboo was well dried during the treatment. The microscopy of position showed that the porous bamboo structure became dense, and the lumen volume of parenchyma tissues greatly reduced, and even some mechanical uh, and even some parenchyma cells were completely collapsed. However, the fiber cells with thin wall were hardly deformed. The changes in micromorphologies could result in the increase, uh, increase of density and the fiber fraction. And uh, after treatment, the density increased to 1.13 gram per cubic centimeter, and the fiber fraction increased to 36.02%. Especially, the treated bamboo showed a relatively uniform density throughout its thickness instead of downward from the outer layer to the inner layer. The mechanical properties of bamboo after treatment were tested, and the results showed that the tensile strength, bending strength, compression strength and shear strength were greatly improved. The strength enhancement was effected by many factors, and the correlation analysis showed that the density, fiber fraction, silver strength, crystallinity, and the number of free hydroxyl groups have dominant effects on the improvement of mechanical properties. In addition, the dimensional stability is important for the application of bamboo engineering material, uh, we expose the natural and treated bamboo to high humidity and then soak them in water. The results show that the, treated, uh, the moist content of treated bamboo was lower than that of natural bamboo and the same condition. And the thickness recovery due to the water absorption was only 4% or less. The results show that the treated bamboo has a low high growth capacity and good dimensional stability. In conclusion, we propose an integrated treatment combining flighting and densification. It is simple, efficient, and chemical free. After treatment, the bamboo strips with gas shape were flattened to a regular shape, which could dispense with the full size planing. The mechanical properties of bamboo were remarkably enhanced. The flattened and densified, uh, and densified bamboo can be used for the manufacture of skateboard, furniture, dinner life, and floor. The proposed new process uh, could open the door to uh, cost-effective and high-performance products development and applications. That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. That concludes our presentations. I would like to thank all the speakers for your wonderful presentation. For today's meeting, we have a better standing of bamboo as a material. It can be used in bridge boats and um, uh, construction, and it can also have a huge potential. Once again, thank you very much for your wonderful presentation. That concludes our meeting. Thank you. Mm -hmm.